Hey everyone, wanna stick with us versus herd. If it's your first time here, like the content, hit subscribe. If you wanna get notifications for any post videos, tap the bell. And if you want to join the UVH fam, our community, links are below in the description to our Discord and our options trading group on Facebook. And also the link to our options trading live channel. I go live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before market open. And if you made money today, comment below, got paid. If you lost money today, comment below, learned a lesson, and do me a big favor, hit the like button for the thumb uh, for the YouTube algo. So kind of getting into things today. I mean, obviously, we had a little bit of a, a, a rocky day. We gapped down pretty huge at one point. Dow was down like a 1,000 points, and then we had an end of the day ramp up, and bulls celebrated even though they're on the losing side right now. And you know, for me today, I did I did make $130 realized profit, but I mainly like today, I mainly just been kind of sitting back, relaxing, see what's gonna go on. Now, probably the biggest eyesore that I have right now is Tesla and you know, kind of kicking things off. Tesla I mean, Tesla was all over the place today. And one of the things that's not helping the cause right now is after hours. Look, right after market close, about about 56, about an hour an hour after market close, Elon comes in, says, important note about Tesla battery day unveiled tomorrow. This affects long-term production, especially semi, cyber truck, and roadster. But what we will but what we announce will not reach serious high volume production until 2022. We intend to increase not reduce battery cell purchases from Panasonic, LG, and CATL possibly other partners too. However, even with our cell suppliers going to maximum speed, we will foresee significant shortages in 2022 and beyond unless we also take action ourselves. So, you know, the stock market is kind of, the market is kind of reacting right now, you know, in, in Tesla had a crazy day. I mean, we, we, we pushed up Tesla was green came all the way down intraday i mean within 30 minutes this thing dropped from 450 all the way to 406 and then climbed back up to 449 at close and was pushing above and then elon comes out and says hey guys you know this is this is going to impact us in 2022 you know the one thing that i will i will say is that you know there he's looking to see major shortages in their own battery supply which means their business is going to pick up is that that's what he's anticipating so he's you know kind of kind of shooting himself in the foot here and i'm not really sure what the importance of this announcement is before battery day battery day tomorrow you know tomorrow's the big day after the stockholder meeting it's going to be the battery day event and it was supposed to be you know pretty cool they're going to announce all the new stuff and now he's saying you know you know, I mean, what, what what what's he doing? What do you guys think? What do you guys leave a comment below? What do you think his end goal is here? Because I'm trying to figure out what the end goal is here, and it's uh, I have I have no idea why he would say that before the event. You know, why wouldn't you say that like during the event? Not like unless you want people to short your stocks so that way what you do during the event you rip the stock up and burn shorts. Because we do know that Te uh, Elon loves burning Tesla shorts. We do know that. So maybe he's trying to disappoint people right now to during the event gonna rip them rip them a new one. I don't know. I don't know, but it's potentially manipulating here. <laughs> he's manipulating something. Um, Nvidia, another stock today. So we'll see. I mean, I have no idea what's gonna happen to Tesla, but Tesla. Well, let's go back to the Tesla one year chart real quick. You know, Tesla. Tesla obviously a little bit choppy in here. However, it is still pretty bullish. Even above, even if it comes down to four hundred, still pretty bullish on the one year here. Uh, Nvidia today. So Nvidia, I had a quick day trade on Nvidia. I traded the five hundred call, which is a little bit out of the money. I'm like, okay, there's no way. I flip. I bought it down in here. I flipped it here and made ninety five bucks. I, I made ninety five bucks just you know, a couple dollar ride, and then it came down, and then it just kept going and going. And that position, you know, on NVIDIA this morning, I bought the 500 call, as you can see here, I bought it for 580, sold it for 675 in NVIDIA. That call is going for the 500 call, 1185. So it could have been up 100% on that trade, but, you know, I don't regret it. You know, one of the things that I'm doing right now is... With the high volatility is I'm trying to get the wins. And as you can see here today, I, 
for day trades, I was two for two. Not not huge wins, not huge wins, but I was two for two. And then I bought a spy call in today. Probably should have taken that off, but you know I let it run a little bit. But I bought spy. I was at 41 bucks in Nvidia. Now what I'm doing, I'm I'm going in real small because I'm trying to just taste a little bit which way the market's gonna go, just play the direction and really just kind of concentrate on my position size, go in small, and then when I feel more comfortable, kind of scale up a little bit, not letting the market get away from you. What you don't want to have happen is have a bunch of positions on you feel like you feel so big to move that you can't you can't really put new trades on because you're not sure or you know, you don't want to get yourself into a position where you're over deploying capital and you have no way to recoup. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just playing real small, scalping some day trades, just trying to relax. You know, Tesla's probably gonna Tesla's probably gonna be a loser if if uh, things don't sh sh shape up tomorrow because I, I honestly think it's gonna be it's gonna be a mess. I mean, it did it did bounce here again at the low. I mean, was this? Was something leaked earlier today that this price action, because this was a serious drop. The market, I mean, it, it was down, but it didn't it was it didn't drop this much at that point in time. However, at the time, Tesla was green. So was something leaked? Was something happened? Did Elon did Elon was forced to say something? Who knows? On top of that, you know, you have the NKLA founder. I didn't I didn't actually trade this, but at NKLA NKLA founder. He resigned today. Obviously, massive gap down. It did come down to 24, close around 27. There was some speculation whether he was arrested, not arrested, and it was confirmed that he was not arrested. There was a lot of rumors, a lot of fake news out today surrounding NKLA. However, you know, now it's down. It's down here, just right above the 200-day. You know, 30, 30 was some pretty good support. So, if NKLA can come back above 30 again, I think that would be good for the stock. But you know, with so much uncertainty plaguing it with the fraud investigations, I mean, you're you're going to be in for a rocky ride if you're trading NKLA. If you've been go, if you've been trading NKLA, NKLA, comment below. Let me know. Let me know what you've been doing. You've been making money. You've been losing money. It's been kind of a, a rough ride to the downside and to the upside because people have been shorting. It's been going up. Just crazy. It was looking. It looked like on Friday, like it was going to ramp back up to like the 35 area. But then you got news came out with uh, Trevor, Trevor resigning. So you know, here we are. Looking at tomorrow in terms of trades. Like I said, I'm going real low and slow. I am trading spy. What I was thinking that was, uh, what I was looking at here is spy. Broke out at 326 here. I put a trade on and looking for it. Now, I'm not going full bull here. I'm looking forward to just to make a push to like the 330 area before coming back down. I am in September 28th expiration. So what I'm doing for the day trades or swing trades going into tomorrow, I'm just playing like a week out, two weeks out and just calling it a day. I'm leaving my core positions that are like in October. I'm going to be looking to move those into November expiration and kind of start start scaling out that way because we're getting a little bit we're getting a little bit closer to the October expiration now now that we're at the end of september so spy same with q's q's actually came in and closed green on the day pretty impressive i mean hit a low of 260 today came all the way back up to 268 and and you know still below the 200 day still pretty bearish but i do think this could make a push to 270 272 area i think it could make a run up into this area but right now with the election coming up with the the UK coronavirus numbers. Let me just pull this up. So there's been a lot of talk, especially with the UK. And the coronavirus numbers in the UK are ramping. So this is this is the big concern. I think this is why we've been seeing the stock market drop. Then you saw stocks like Peloton and Zoom that are coronavirus safe stocks ramping up. But you have you know the stock market overall is heading lower and i think there's a lot of fear coming in regarding the coronavirus overseas and, and if you guys remember the first the first wave of covid obviously started in asia and china then made its way across europe and then came to the us so we were on the back end right and right now UK is getting hit. You know, they were they were pretty low under a thousand a day, and then they were going way up. Now, the one thing that I will say, you know, whether you know deaths are lagging, deaths are under 24 the whole UK. So super, super low. So, 
you know, it's bad people are getting sick, but it's good people aren't dying. So that's really good. But I think that it's just driving a lot of fear into the market. And I don't necessarily think that this is going to cause a problem. People are saying, hey, the UK may. There's just a lot of speculation right now. And pricing is all over the place. Same with, you know, if you look at the US, if we look at the US here, you know, we're downtrending, but this could reverse at any time. But if you look at deaths here, deaths are relatively on the lower, not as low as the UK. We're still at like 300, but for cases, you know, we're, we're a lot higher, obviously we're a lot higher. You know, we're at 42,000 when the UK only had like, you know, 3000, 3000 a day, 4,000 a day, which I mean, it's, it's high for them, you know, based on their, their population, but going into the United States, you know, we're at like 43,000, but deaths, deaths were at like 300 or basically a thousand or less. We'll just call it a thousand. Or less. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Is it, don't you guys think it's weird? That's like so choppy, like up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Like, why is that the case? Why is there so much choppiness? You know, obviously this is trending lower, but the UK not as choppy and trending higher, except for deaths. Now, I know deaths lag, but deaths are at a minimum for the UK and, and cases are on the rise. So, I think it's a lot of fear in the market. I don't necessarily think that we're going to probably go through a second wave shutdown. I think that it could get bad, but I don't think, I think, you know, in my opinion, of course, this is my opinion, I'm not a doctor by any means, but I think the worst is over. And I think the market's overreacting a little bit into what's happening here. But let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, but that's kind of my thoughts for tomorrow. If you watch the video to the end, comment, watch to the end. And as always, stay safe, stay green. It's us versus herd.